Raja and I would always be in constant co coordination. I mean, co if I forget speaking something in my speech, there was no time, etc. I would tell Raja, this point has been left out. And then, and then he would cover. So in that sense, uh, speaking about him, because I've known him since when, 1980s, that we go back to more than four decades now. And uh, through the student movement, through the youth movement, through the parliament, through the party, etc. I mean, this has all been a <clears throat> very, very long uh, journey. But all my hearty congratulations to the publishers, to the person who edited, I mean, to the people who contributed in putting this volume together and all those who have taken that interview which uh, as Jairam said is uh, <clears throat> much more informative and gives us a lot more uh, insights into many things that uh, need to be discussed further and taken ahead and to all these people I think my, I mean we all should be grateful that they've done this work and brought this publication out so very good <clears throat> of all of you but what do I say about Raja and since all about the all about the speeches? So he entered the parliament two years after I was, I entered. And therefore he left the parliament two years after I left. But for that one decade together, we were there in uh, in the parliament virtually through the period of the United Front government, the first and the second, and then the change, which has actually changed the character of the Indian Parliament and is now trying to change the Republic itself. And when that came, I remember moving an amendment to the President's address, which I think, Jairam, you also were a little offended that normally the Honorable President of India's address should not be amended. We should show respect and that it should be returned. It's never happened. But because it was this new government under Mr. Modi's uh, Prime Ministership, there was a mention there's a lack of mention of anything to do with communal rights or communal disturbances. If you recollect, we moved that amendment and we voted upon it and that was the first defeat for Mr. Modi in the parliament. And that, when that happened in 1914, I mean 2014, when, when, when that happened, then Raja and I would always be in constant co coordination. I mean, co if I forget speaking something in my speech, there was no time, etc. I would tell Raja, this point has been left out. And then, and then he would cover. So in that sense, uh, speaking about him, because I've known him since when, 1980s, that we go back to more than four decades now. And uh, through the student movement, through the youth movement, through the parliament, through the party, etc. I mean, this has all been a <clears throat> very, very long uh, journey, but there were very, very interesting uh, moments in the parliament. When I was leaving, I told him, Raja, I'm, I think I'm leaving at the right time. You'll have to suffer for another two years <laughs> with this government, because by the time you leave, maybe the parliament as we know doesn't exist. And which unfortunately is exactly what is happening. And, and this is, I mean, Thank you very much for the, uh, my co colleagues who wished me to, wished both of us to come back to the parliament. And yes, there's a lot of the parties we used to have. Jairam mentioned some, and uh, Shiva mentioned about what Jairam mentioned to me. Jairam would always talk to me, he was talking about the Common Minimum Program. Mm -hmm. He would always refer to me as the obituary of the UPA. In the sense that I will write the obituary column for the UPA because I'll bring down the government. And, and I said Sitaram obituary, not Yachuri. I would retort, I would retort to him saying that if I am Sitaram obituary, then you are Jairam Morshuri. <laughs> you, you will send this government to the mortuary, which is what. Anyway, but you know, so this sort of, uh, I don't know if some, that sort of humor exists today in the parliament or not. <laughs> if there's anybody who, who talks about these things, but anyway, I mean, we used to have it in that sort of, like Arun Jaitley. Yes, Arun Jaitley was ABVP leader, I was SFI leader, and we used to be in the opposite side of the student movement for more than 40, I mean, four decades or more. So when I was leaving the parliament, Arun Jaitley said, Sitaram and I have grown up together. Then I had to interrupt him. I said, Arun, will you yield for a minute? And yielding in parliament means that the other person sits down and so that you can stand up and speak officially. 
So, will you yield for a minute? He said, uh, yes, I mean, he was gracious enough, he yielded. But you forgot to mention, he said, in, during these four decades plus, both of us were on either side of the fence. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's not that we grew up together in that sense of growing up together, we grew up together in conflict, you know, in hostility. So, Raja and I were, of course, on the same side of the fence. <laughs> we always are and we still remain even right now. But during this entire period of the parliament, I think what is happening now, if I want to get back into the parliament, it can only happen when parliament will be allowed to discharge its responsibility. And this is something, unfortunately, that is being, that is escaping the public domain and public discussion space. The Constitution of India begins with the words, we the people. What does it mean? We the people, in that is the centrality of the Constitution, that the sovereignty in India rests with the people. People are the sovereign masters of this country. And that is why the Constitution says, we the people are hamlog. And when that hamlog or we the people, when that begins, how do people exercise that sovereignty? People exercise that sovereignty by electing their representatives who are accountable to the people. And these representatives who constitute the legislature, the executive that the Constitution gives us, the executive legislature and the judiciary, the executive is accountable to the legislature. Executive accountable to legislature, legislators accountable to people, so people exercise their sovereignty through this chain. If the parliament breaks, if the parliament's functioning breaks, this whole chain collapses. People's, people's sovereignty just collapses. And that is exactly what is happening today. And if people's sovereignty collapses, this parliamentary order collapses, then this constitution virtually is destroyed. And you heard Siddharth just now talking about the blank sheet of paper that they produced after one and a half years for the bridge between the judiciary and the, and, and the parliament. So the pressures on the other institutions of our constitution, whether the judiciary, whether the election commission, whether the CBI, whether the ED, along with the destruction of the, parla of the parliament, this is a very, very ominous signs. And if this has to be restored, then there has to be, I mean, it has only has to be a political process of restoration. And this political process of restoration will have to necessarily come outside of, of the parliament, where we are there. And those inside the parliament are also there outside the parliament. So we'll all have to make sure that we restore the sanctity of our constitution, the centrality of our constitution, which is the sovereignty of the people. And that is where I think Raja's contribution will continue. I mean, whether it's in parliament or outside, like all of us, our contributions will, will, will continue to strengthen. And then when the better parliament comes, who knows? Mr. Raja will come back. I mean, <laughs> And I don't know now, don't tell me Raja whether it will be DMK or ADMK or somebody else. <laughs> but, 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 but because Shiva made a very, <laughs> very insightful comment. And I know the second time when Raja came, that was very good. Because we told him as CPM, he said between CPI and CPM we have 18 MLAs in Tamil Nadu. You stand, let us see what happens. And in fact, I think, Raja, I don't know if you were personally reluctant, but some of you were reluctant, saying that if we don't assure the seat, how can we stand? But then finally that pressure worked. They, they had to back off their candidate, and then he was elected unanimously. So that... Huh? That was voting, but... The, yeah, the, yeah, for voting formality, but... That, uh, but so the po point at issue is, yes, Parliament is, of course, the most important forum of Indian democracy. And now you're seeing, you have the chairman. Very, very luckily, my last day in parliament was the current chairman's first day. <laughs> and my last speech, after my farewell speech, my last speech was to formally, as the leader of my party, welcome him. Uh -huh. Which I did. Otherwise, a good friend. We both come from Andhra. We were part of the student movement, etc., etc., opposite sides, anyway. But when... Today he's formed a committee, he wants to form a committee for the discipline of the parliamentarians. Mm. 
I have told our MPs not to join. I don't know, I hope that all the other parties also take a similar decision. And they want a self-policing. So I come to you, on, on the MPs, they, they police themselves. And this is, com I mean, completely anti-democratic. And it is they who are curtailing all the rights, and as was mentioned, no standing committees. Chairman of the standing committees are not allowed to function, not allowed to hold meetings. If they want to take up something on the agenda, then the majority of the ruling party, they boycott that committee. And in that way, they stifle all these uh, committees. Jairam, you're a chairman now? Well, no, yeah. I mean, you ask him, he'll tell you what is happening to his committee functioning. You have some of the former secretaries to serve as secretaries to the committees, who <laughs> are also there, Mr. Saha is here. So, I mean, the whole system is breaking down. And this is what has to be fought. If parliament cannot be preserved, Indian democracy cannot be, the Indian constitution can't be. And this is the much larger battle which we'll have to fight outside. And there, Raja and I have always been comrades in arms. And everybody on this, uh, who's here, have all been on the side of India. So not on my side or your side, but on the side of India, on the side of the Indian constitution, and on the side of Indian democracy. And that is what I think we'll all have to commit ourselves, or recommit ourselves, or rededicate ourselves, or re-strengthen re our resolve to defend and protect. And this is a much larger battle. And I think this book will be a contribution to that battle, but the battle has to be carried forward in a much larger way, more intensely. And as Jai Ram pointed out, that we will be having working out the matter in which we'll be able to coordinate our efforts, all the secular forces. And uh, in uh, doing so, hopefully, a third opportunity we'll have when Jairam will bring his voluminous draft for a common minimum program uh, to both, <laughs> to both, <laughs> to, to both Raja and me. <laughs> and then, then we'll, we'll work out something. And let us hope, I mean, we're all working for that day when we are able to find a better alternative that believes in the founding principles of modern India, which is there enshrined in the preamble of our constitution. And that is a battle for what we call the idea of India. It is this idea of India that has to be preserved. And that is where I think all of us share that uh, same passion to save this idea of India and to change it for the better in the coming days. And uh, that is what I think the message from this book should go out to all of us and to the country. So thank you, thank you once again, your publishers, for having brought out this effort and made this effort. Thank you all. Thanks. Kindly like, share and subscribe our YouTube channel.